Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 96 of Generation GC. Oh my god, OMG MGK by the Madden Brothers, featuring Machine Gun Kelly from their before Volume 1 mixtape released in 2011. Wow, that's a mouthful of a title. My guests today are Ashley Godfrey and Ashley Rayburn, both of whom are previous Generation GC guests. Ashley Godfrey was on episode 28, Victims of Love, and Ashley Rayburn was on episode 14, Anxiety, as well as episode 83, Hold On, Part 1. Last time, we talked about Right Where I Belong from Cardiology. This is a bonus episode. We're talking about something that is not a good Charlotte Studio album track. I wish you guys could have seen the hand gesture I just made, because I'm really excited. On our next episode, after a break, we'll be talking about a song from Youth Authority. Ashley Godfrey is 33 years old and lives in Cleveland, Ohio. She currently works as a medical assistant and is going back to school to be a registered nurse. She and her husband like to travel, go to shows, and spend time with their three cats. Ashley Godfrey is a pop punk girl at heart, but a huge metal fan as well and likes a little bit of everything. She's also played the violin for over 20 years, which is another way she gets to keep up with different types of music. Ashley Rayburn lives in Detroit, Michigan, and recently graduated with her second master's degree in December. She still works for the legendary St. Andrews Hall and Shelter, but also is working with the promotional teams for several local radio stations and popular music festivals around the states to help expand her career in the music industry. She's ready to be back on the road, traveling to shows across the globe, and could not be more thankful for the incredible support system of her best friends, incredible coworkers, and her two cuddly pups that have helped navigate the still uncertain times we're I just have to reiterate how truly incredibly excited I am about this episode and how much fun it was to research it and record it with Ashley Godfrey and Ashley Rayburn. I remember I spent a lot of time just figuring out how I was going to organize it, like which kind of segments would go where, since this is a little different than a, a t typical episode, right? You know, it, it is about the song itself, oh my god, OMG MGK, but it's also kind of about Machine Gun Kelly and who he is and how he relates to pop punk nowadays, how Good Charlotte might have influenced him, the Good Charlotte MGK connection. I mean, it was a lot of fun. And I love MGK, but I don't know nearly as much about him as my two guests today do. Um, they've both been listening to him for a very, very long time. They've also been supporting Generation GC pretty much since the beginning, and I truly could not have done this episode without Ashley Godfrey and Ashley Rayburn together. A brief personal update, um, my recovery from knee surgery is continuing to go pretty well. Still kind of fatigued, but it is getting better day by day, and I'm counting the days until I can go to a concert again. I am really looking forward to that. I'm, you know, glad I've been able to rest up, but I am excited to get out and do things. As a reminder, this is our last episode of Generation GC before our break, where I'm going to be recording the next batch of episodes. Uh, I'm thinking that the next batch will come out in September, so stay tuned. I also want to say that I love having guests from all around the world and from all different backgrounds on Generation GC. If English isn't your first language, that's okay. As long as you're comfortable holding a conversation in English, you're good to go. And different backgrounds doesn't just mean location or ethnicity. It means ensuring a very gender and sexuality representation and representing fans of different ages and fans with their own unique life experiences of any sort. So if you're listening to this and you're like, wow, I have a story that I would like to share. I have a unique perspective on Generation GC. I, I want to hear someone like me be represented. Hit me up. Let's talk. I'd love to have you on the show. I, I Most of my guests are people that listen to the show that love the show. Finally, Generation GC stickers are here. If you do want a sticker, all you've got to do is support the show on Anchor. Go to anchor.fm slash Generation GC pod and click support. All that money goes right back into making the show the best that it can be, as well as printing and shipping the stickers. So you're going to support the show, and you're then going to send me a screenshot of your support, as well as your mailing address. You can email me, generationgcpod at gmail.com, or hit me up on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, generationgcpod, and I will send you some stickers. Pretty cool, right? Thank you all for tuning in. This episode is, it was just, it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of information, a lot of commentary, uh, a lot of opinions, a lot of stories, a lot of feelings. I, I think you're going to love it. Hi, I am Ashley Godfrey. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and uh, I was on a past episode of uh, Victims of Love, 
and I'm super excited to be here today. And I'm Ashley Raybert. My pronouns are she, her, and I was previously on one of the earlier episodes for anxiety as well as the hold on episode. Amazing. Thank you both for uh, coming back on the show. I could not imagine doing this episode without both of you here. We're talking today about, oh my God, OMG, MGK, which is by the Madden Brothers, and it features Machine Gun Kelly, or MGK, also known sometimes as Kells. Um, And it is track two on the Madden Brothers before volume one mixtape, which I don't know either of you two might know more, but I don't think they ever did any kind of like vinyl or tape or like any kind of physical pressing of this, did they? No, not that nope. I saw. Yeah. No, if there no. is one, I would like one, please. Yeah, same. <laughs> it was, well, well, we'll get to the release in a sec, but uh, this whole, and we have a bunch of quotes, which are, give a lot of good background. Um, track one was Let Go featuring Mestizo, Hollywood Holt, and Casey Veggies. Track three is Take Me Back to Teenage Crime featuring Rocky Fresh. Um, on this track, I think what's going on is that Kells is doing the verses. Benji and Kells are doing the chorus. I think Joel was only singing at like the drop, like the bridge section. That's what Genius said anyway. But I don't <laughs> know if either of you have been able to like parse that out better, better like which twin is singing. Um, you know, I, um, probably should have watched the music <laughs> video. Um, Ashley, do you remember who's singing? I mean, I think you have it right, Molly, from what I looked at earlier. It's yeah. been a while since I've actually watched the video, but that's seemed appropriate because you can tell, like, the tones, but it's Joel definitely on all the, the chorus parts. Oh, it's Joel on the chorus parts, you think? Okay. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Oh my God. Is it now? I'm like, yeah, I thinking about it, it, it does sound more like him. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it is. I don't know. I mean, I trust you both. <laughs> but what's, I mean, so what's interesting about, I mean, all of the Madden Brothers releases, which are this and then like Greetings from California album in 2014, is like they're not really on streaming. So to listen to this, you have to go on like, YouTube or I think SoundCloud. SoundCloud, I think it's still up, but like Spotify, Apple Music. I literally have, have it on my old iPod. Yeah, <laughs> I have it on the iPod did, that I lost somewhere. Did they ever have this on? I know once upon a time, Greetings from California was on Spotify. Um, was this ever on Spotify or like Apple or anything? No, I just remember there being like a link on a weird website. And then, like, the track yes. listing, and then I downloaded it from that website because I'm super trusting. Yeah. And I put it on my iPad. This mixtape premiere on Complex, um, I guess to share, you know, I, I was going to, like, wait to share this till later, but to share my background with this, um, I listened to this mixtape when it came out. I did not listen to it again one single time until I was working <laughs> on this episode. I did not like this when I came out, to be honest. I... I did not even listen to the full thing again. Um, I'm not sure I really like it still. I appreciated a lot about the song, especially lyrically, which we'll get into. I'm like, okay, yeah, like the lyrics are very GC. Um, looking back, I can't tell if like I actually disliked it that much or if I was just like so aggressively mad that Good Charlotte broke up and like this is what we got because it was not what I wanted. Um, I mean, the mixtape premiered on Complex, which is, like, a hip-hop website. Like, it's a big hip-hop website, like, good for them, but, like, uh, it was produced by the Madden Brothers at Los Madden Studios with Archangel and Dirty Waters. Um, there's some background on the release that was on their SoundCloud page, which I'll read. Um, I think Joel, Joel wrote this because it says, at one point, it says, Benj and I. Uh, so I'm just going to skip around a little bit reading this. Extra special thanks to our friends and family who were a part of this mixtape and to every artist on this mixtape. So as, as background um, to anyone listening, every track on this, I believe, features a guest, which is like prior to hiatus. I don't think, geez, well, 
I guess on the first album, Motivated from Proclamation, they had a guest, but that wasn't really a big thing GC did pre-hiatus was uh, having guests. You have no idea what your creative forces and support mean to us. Every artist on this tape makes us believe in music. You all inspire us to stay hungry and stay believing. Before anyone knew who you were, before anyone cared what you could or would do, before anyone listened, before anyone believed, before the blog hype, before you were left or hated, before you had an image to keep up with, before you could show up late or leave early, before everything, it was just music. Uh, the entire project was a labor of love amongst friends and peers who either believed in us or just liked us enough to have the goodwill to join in. Most of the artists are relatively new and are artists we were fans of online or that we met through friends that we had cultivated relationships with through email, phone calls, and Twitter, most of which we have, if we weren't friends already, become very close friends with. Our only real objective for doing this mixtape was to have fun and be creative. There was really no agenda beyond good times with artists we love and to create an environment where we could creatively be ourselves. I think out of frustration with the music business, sometimes it causes us to need an avenue to just have fun, make music, and to put out for the pure love of it. Um, yeah, I think just an interesting point about that is like, they talk about most of the artists are relatively new and this was 2011 when Machine Gun Kelly, Kelly, like nobody diehard fans, but like he wasn't a mainstream artist yet. That was a couple of years away from him. Yeah. Uh, now right. he has, I mean, Spotify numbers, I think are a little off because GC's success came well before Spotify was big, but Machine Gun Kelly is massive. He's doing like a really big summer tour. I mean, number one hits. I don't think GC ever had lots of radio hits, but never number one, I don't think, in the US. Um, they they hinted in this, and as well as in the like few amount of like discussions, like there, there was hint of a volume two coming, but we never <laughs> got a volume two. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot in, of volume twos we haven't gotten yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right we never got a gc christmas part two uh, i was just gonna say that one <laughs> i don't know wait are there other volume twos we're missing that was the first one that came to mind okay but, okay but i'm sure there's other things yeah um so this was like november 2011 and i can say exactly where i was when this came out i was in a hotel in Covington, Kentucky, which is right across from Cincinnati. And I was on the like uh, stage crew for NACA, which is a campus activities conference. And um, I was in a hotel and I was like up really late because we had long days, but I was like, oh, Benji and Joel Madden just put out something. Um, and then I heard it and, you know, like wanted to like throw my laptop into the river. <laughs> um, yeah, so we didn't get a volume two of this. It was like almost three years later, we got Greenish from California. They never toured in support of this. Um, they planned a tour for Greetings around the time that was released, but that did not happen. Nope, sure didn't. And I yep, know. I had tickets to that too. <laughs> Same, yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah, every East Coast show we had. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that they did, I think they did like some TV performances for Greetings. And then, like, a couple at, like, the, there was, like, a couple live things at, there was a charity one at House mm. of Blues in California, okay. and, like, the launch at the Houdini Mansion as well. Ooh. But did they do any performances of this stuff? I mean, I guess this is a little tricky with all the guests, it might have been tough, but did they do any performances of this material? Only in my Not dreams. that I'm, yeah, right. I'm forever hoping for a live OMG MGK performance for the rest of my life. Eternally the same. I think that'll be sick. And we, uh, there's a couple, there's some fun articles that I found that are also wanting, you know, some GC MGK 2022 collapse. Uh, we have a lot to get into with MGK, with this song, with, you know, MGK's role in pop punk and his, his feelings about GC, but First, I want to help our guests uh, get to know more about you. You know, you, you both were on the show before. I truly, I know I've said this before, I, I could not think of anyone else to join me for this episode. We've both, we've talked uh, previously about how both of you have discovered GC, but 
for both of you, I would love to hear when did you first hear Machine Gun Kelly and what were your first thoughts on him? Well, I know for me, you know, I'm from Cleveland. So I, um, I remember my friend, there's a band from Cleveland. They're, well, they uh, not a band anymore, but they were called Salt the Wound. And my friend came over one day and said, oh, there's this guy, you know, Machine Gun Kelly, and he's going to be on Salt the Wound's new album. And this was, I don't know, maybe like 2010-ish. And I'm like, I never heard of him. And I, you know, looked him up and uh, immediately was like fell in love with it. I was like, oh, this. And I wasn't not like a rap fan before. I was really not not into it but this was like just on a whole nother whole nother level drew me right in what so do you, what do you think drew you in i mean really i think just his his lyrics were like completely different than what mm -hmm. you're used to with the rap genre i think okay and i mean his whole persona is different like mm -hmm. i mean he's just he was just just different in the whole sense of what you're used to in that scene. So um, I just became like a huge fan instantly. And then, you know, I went to, I saw him at a bar, like for free shortly wow. after that. And then, right, yeah, those days are long gone. Um, <laughs> and then the rest is kind of, kind of history. So that was... That was how I found out about him. Wow, amazing. I love that. Ashley Rayburn, I'd love to hear your story. Uh, mine was, I had heard of him first about 2010 as well. There was a song he put out called Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. And I would like, I have Alice in Wonderland tattoo, like having worked, gotten right out of Disneyland at that point. I was like, okay, cool. Like, let me listen to this. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I like this. Again, like, same like with Ashley, like it wasn't really my style, but I was like, you know, young, like punk looking kid singing more vulnerable lyrics, like with yeah. um, lead you on, especially to like the vulnerability he has in a lot of his lyrics is something that obviously has connected us all through Good Charlotte too. So I was like, that's me. That's, this is what I love. Um, so I just like kept listening to him and a lot of friends I've made through Good Charlotte live in Cleveland. So I know one of them, um, Dre, we would literally just like text back and forth on the Blackberry that we had <laughs> and like she went to school around the way same way too so she would like send me like pictures she's like oh hey look what i found in this yearbook today it was like uh k's high school photos and i was oh like oh my amazing. god and like when he would do like the flash mobs at the mall and stuff like that yes oh my god <laughs> so, like, so it was just like the passion like you can feel it like immediately like after you see him live for the first time and or just like listening and then like seeing the things that he was doing to try to get his name out there. You felt that passion and desire to be there. Yeah. I was like, this is what I love. This is what so much of like the pop punk and rock community is already already about. That's how people get their start. Yeah. And you just have to stop and appreciate that regardless of what you like. And like just learning the lyrics and the energy, like the genre didn't matter at that point. I was just, I was in. I, I like what you said about just the passion and just seeing him live and everything. I had, for context, I have seen him live two or three times now. Um, the first time was July, like summer 2011 in Cleveland. Um, it was, I think it was Nautica Pavilion, like right on the water downtown. Um, oh, yeah. Because I was staying at school for the summer. And it was like a radio show and Wiz Khalifa was headlining. And like, I had no idea who anybody else was. Could not tell you who anybody else played that day. But I remember seeing MGK and he like covered What's My Age Again by Blink-182. Did he like, take I think his clothes he, off too? Yeah, he definitely <laughs> took his shirt off. He yep, might sure take his shorts off too. Um, yep. <laughs> I didn't really follow with his career much. Um, I did get to go to X Fest in 2018. I worked it. Um, I ran a uh, booth for a nonprofit there, which was I mean, great experience, like really, really fun crowd. Um, just very 
loving, you know, like really, really cool and just wonderful, like positive environment. Um, and it was just cool to see all the people that came there for his thing. But I do have a copy of, I'm pretty sure I still have a copy of Lace Up that like, it's like funny that I even held on to it. Like, I think they were like tossing in them in the crowd for free, but I was like, I'm going to hold on to this. And it's like in my like my box of mementos that uh, <laughs> I believe is still there. But yeah, I mean, definitely he's a much, he's, I mean, he's like one of the biggest artists in the world right now. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. crazy. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into uh, everything MGK, but I'm just, you know, I, I just want to, just check in with both of you on how things have been going. I mean, Ashley Godfrey, since you were first on the show, you have started nursing school. I just would love to hear a little bit about, you know, what made you want to pursue nursing and how it's going so far. Well, I had actually always wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I mean, I, well, I originally went to school to be a, a music teacher, long, long time nurse, and somebody, at the school talked me out of it because I had to work yeah. and that's how I ended up being a medical assistant and you know life kind of just happens and you get stuck in the rut right so um my job was kind of up in the air back in like 2020 mm. and I was like it's now or never <laughs> so so I just uh decided to finally go back I made the jump so wow. um but at that time, too, I was taking care of my aunt who was sick. And, um, you know, that was part of it, too. You know, she was really pushing me to go, too. She was like, you really should go back. And so that was part of it, too. And um, so eventually I'd like to be a hospice nurse. But, I mean, wow. I know things can change. Wow. But yeah. Um, that's like. But yeah. So that's. Mm my grandma was in hospice in her home. Um, she was able to stay in her home, but she had, she had not a nurse, but she had a home health aide that was like, uh, just wonderful. And like having such a great person, like taking care of her at such an important moment. It's like, and I'm sure you know this, but like, it's just such a wonderful thing for the family too. Oh yeah. 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 Wow. I mean, yeah, she, um, I took care of my grandma too, you know, yeah. um, when I was about what nine years ago, but wow. that was that was really a lot of work. But mm -hmm. um, you know, my aunt was just I was just driving her around and stuff. You know, more of a company. You know, I was right. more company for her. But my grandma, I was really taking care of her. Like you know, my husband and I moved in with her and wow. really had to take care of her. But um, so that was really what got me into all that too. But um. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, I do. I really like it. So I like helping people. And I've worked at the same office that I'm at now for 12 years. So, you know, I like the people that I take, you know, I know the people I take care of now and stuff. So I like having that relationship with people too. So it's it's nice. That's so great. That's so great. Yeah. How, how much longer do you have in your program? Um, well, I'm starting the nursing program in the fall. So oh, right. Two years, so, like two years from there. Right, right, yeah. Right. I'm, wow. I just finished all those up. So, wow. so yep. Super exciting. Years. Amazing. Thank you for sharing all that. Yes. And just so excited. I mean, you know, we, we talk, we check in, but I'm oh, really thanks. excited to hear about how everything goes. Um, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh my God, of course. And Ashley Rayburn, I mean, when we first talked, I mean, you had been working in a venue, although when we first talked there, you know, was not much going on at the venue. Um, I mean, things have opened up now. You you have some shows going on. You're also doing, I think, radio promotions. Um, I, I'm just curious, like, what's, what is radio promotions like? I sort of know what it is, but I, I don't know too much about it. And it sounds pretty fun from what I do now. We do. Um, for that one, we do quite a few different things. It can be everything from just doing an in-person event with one of the, like, uh, we have a lot of big morning shows here that are pretty famous. Um, so we'll do like show, like just pop-up events for meet and greets with the talent. Cool. Um, we just did Motor City Comic Con, which was super fun. Um, and then, but like my favorite things with the promotions is that we get to be part of like all the holiday charity events. Like, 
we have a thing called breaking and entering where we go to people's houses and literally provide them with a Christmas that they could never have or if they experience like some kind of tragedy so like everybody's in tears by the end of it and it's just like every hard day or like hot day in the sun or just uncomfortable event that we may do before that like I haven't been there that long but that made it a hundred percent worth it that's amazing wow and my boss loves good charlotte so well yeah what else could you ask for (laughs) (laughs) what else could you ask for a great job that's like in the entertainment industry and you like help people who need it and your boss loves good charlotte i really don't know what else you could ask for in a job exactly (laughs) incredible well I mean, I could I could talk to you both for hours just catching up, but let's let's dive into a little bit, you know, this this track and kind of the GC MGK connection. Um, you know, you're both huge Machine Gun Kelly fans and huge Good Charlotte fans. What sticks out to you about Oh my God, OMG MGK? You know, why why do you think it's important or relevant? I mean, it definitely has, I mean, when you look at the lyrics, especially at the time that it was released, um, I mean, it definitely has that, like, more, I'm trying to think of how to put it in words, like, like, be yourself, you know, Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I don't give a fuck type vibe you know and I mean I think that's kind of a good vibe to have (laughs) because I mean you should be yourself you know I mean I don't know that's I think I think that's pretty relevant to me but you know I think what came up for me as I was listening to this and actually you're really, I want to hear from you too I'm just like I'm I, this is coming by so strong what came up for me as I was listening to this was like it's kind of like way ahead of its time like GC has always been super open about hip-hop being an influence but like this was 2011 and it wasn't until what like 2016 2017 that like emo rap and SoundCloud rap kind of like became a thing you know and then it was even a couple years later before we got like the, you know, tickets to my town fall and Willow doing pop punk and new Avril and my son and Lil Huddy. Like, so this was kind of way ahead of its time. And also like, there's a Skrillex like drop or something. And I don't know the term for it, but there's like some Skrillex coming in here. And like, I was just thinking about this, but like, Nowadays, there's so many, like, big EDM artists. Skrillex, obviously, I think was a, you know, had a a large part, pioneer, yes. Large pioneer of, you know, this sort of, like, EDM, like, alt-rock crossover. But, like, Elenium has done lots of, like, collabs with rock artists. Um, Kygo did a whole album. And Said the Sky, too. Like, I, I mean, a bunch of, like, big EDM artists are working with like all rock artists right like but this was this is 2022 and this was this oh my god oh jmk was 2011 like before that was like 11 years ago really i know (laughs) yeah but like when skrillex came out that wasn't like a thing that like no or it wasn't like a known thing that rockers became djs i think that's a lot more known now but true I feel like it it kind of falls in the same category with Good Morning Revival and Greatest Remixes. Yeah. Yeah. Made like out of mm-hmm. place at the time, but now you look back and you're like, damn. Well, Good Morning Revival, I mean, GC has always gotten like not great reviews. I think and and un- until the post hiatus, the post hiatus stuff, I think got a lot better reviews than their prior stuff, which but we're not gonna go down that road right now. <laughs> Um, but Good Morning Revival, like, a lot of people just kind of didn't get it, and Greatest Remixes, I mean, Ashley Rayburn, I don't know if you remember from our episode, but, like, I didn't like Greatest Remixes, still don't really, 
Um, but I get it a lot more now. But like on our episode about the song Anxiety from Greatest Remixes, I'm pretty sure I quoted the Amazon review that I wrote in like 2008 about about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's still up. Like y'all, y'all can, you know, go, I'm not gonna read it now. Y'all can find it yourselves. But yeah, that's a good point with greatest remixes. Like they were kind of that was also ahead of its time, but like if they had waited however many years, then like would they have been the ones starting the wave or would they have been, you know, oh well, they're just doing the same thing everybody else is. Yeah. I think that's important just to do what you're feeling at the moment, regardless of what the industry may be trending. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. And GC is big on that. Um Madden Brothers, right around this time, I don't know which actually came first, but Madden Brothers did feature on an MGK song called Welcome to the Rage, and the video is, I mean, it's like MGK concert footage, and it's all, like, it's mosh pits. Like, if you didn't tell me that was a guy rapping, I would think it was, like, a pop punk show, like, skinny white boy covered in tattoos, and people are, you know, moshing and crowd surfing. Uh, Here's a question that I feel like I've probably posed to both of you over text message, but, like, have they asked it on this episode? Um, Tickets to My Downfall, which was Machine Gun Kelly's first pop punk album in 2020. There's a lot of, a handful of references to, like, other bands. Um, He has the track Bloody Valentine. Do we know if that's, like, officially a good Charlotte reference? I mean, there is a band called My Bloody Valentine, but I feel like, I almost feel like that's a little more of a stretch than it being a GC reference, or it could just be like he was trying to sound emo as fuck. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious, like, if either of you know anything or if you have any thoughts on that. Not officially. Like, I've not heard anything officially released on that, but, like, yeah. I can very clearly remember, too, at the Cleveland Warped Tour in 2016, um, because we went down for that and then we went to the yeah. premiere for Nerve. But he was literally just on the side stage of Good Charlotte set, just like Cute. flopping around, singing, dancing to everything, knowing every word off to the side. I, so. I love that. Speaking of uh, Warp Tour, Kells was on Warp Tour, I think 2012. I don't know how long he was on. Um, <laughs> yes. He set me on fire that day. <laughs> what? I want that story. I want, a, I want that story. <laughs> well we were just there performing and i had like my shirt on and we were front row he somehow got his hand i don't know who did this but somebody gave him a flare and oh he God. lit it on stage and then like he tossed it off the side and like the embers came off and like caught my shirt and i'm like it's, like i'm like something's burning me and like i looked down <laughs> oh my and God. i still have this t-shirt too and you can still see the burn holes did you have like burn oh scars <laughs> mm-hmm and it like just to make it more ironic in my life, the shape of the scar and like I kid you not, I still have pictures somewhere. The shape of the scar was burned into a heart. Oh my god! It's not oh the first god. time he's tried to take me out. I've been but, I've got no, right. <laughs> I've got, well, it, it no, kind I have of, many injuries as well. Many injuries from <laughs> from him. Yes, you know, if we're talking about you know, Kel's getting your heart and everything, I'm just thinking of this engagement ring he gave Megan Fox that apparently like has thorns on it so she can't take it off or something. Um, oh. <laughs> I could have done an entire podcast on the one. It was that one, I think it was like GQ or something, that one article that was with Kells and Megan Fox. It was like right when they got engaged. Uh, I, I could do an entire podcast just on that <laughs> article. Um, anyway, a little more about Kells. Um, he also did a surprise appearance at the 25th anniversary Warp Pro show in Mountain View, California in 2019. Um, JC, it seems they are still big MGK fans. Uh, when Tickets to My Downfall went number one, Billy gave him a shout out for the number one and just noted what a big win it was for the rock world. Um, as we get into, you know, the song itself, oh my god, OMG, MGK, what a mouthful, by the way, I I'm really curious, like, before you both listened to this song, like, you were both MGK fans before you listened, so 
what were you expecting? Like when you hit play, like what, and, and like, what were you expecting? And then after you listened the first time, like, what did you think of this? I mean, I kind of felt like I was going to love it no matter what, to be honest, just because obviously funny. two of my favorite people, two of my favorite, you know, artists, mm -hmm. but, um, I mean, I, I guess I never know what to expect when it comes to, well, especially because, you know, I didn't know what, um, was going on, you know, with, with, um, GC, you know, at that time. Yeah. And then, you know, we're getting this from the, from Benji and Joel. So, and I'm already familiar with what, what, um, with what MGK is doing. So, um, and then after I heard it, you know, I was just like, this is fucking fantastic. This is amazing. So this was, this was obviously my favorite thing off this entire course. Um, yeah. Project they did. So, 100%. I mean, it was, this was amazing and I will forever be wondering what the live sounds like forever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> whenever your, like, favorite worlds collide, it's amazing. Like, at that point, like, I wasn't, like, I wasn't as fully, like, in as deep as clearly I am now. Like, I've got the whole sleeve of tattoos. I was going to say, I know you have a bunch of MGK tattoos. Just a few. <laughs> but, like, when your worlds collide, and then, like, to have it be a song that feels so relatable, like, being a young 20-something-year-old kid working service and retail jobs and being told you can't do something because of the way you look or or how you were raised or what you come from and it's just like to have that it makes it so much better i remember i think it was right before the song was released because i remember losing like my shit of the picture with the twins and mgk at lunch <laughs> i remember that being tweeted out and i was like what is happening like, is this going to happen? Is there some kind of something happening? Like, something's in the yeah, works? And, like, the I was like, it was like, I think it was like, oh, here's this mixtape, right? Like, I don't really remember there being much of a preamble to it. Mm -mm. Yeah. So it's just like, there's, there's, they're together. They're doing something. I think I called my dad <laughs> when I, after I listened to this mixtape, and I was like, dad, I don't, I don't like this and I'm kind of having a crisis <laughs> and I don't know what Benji and Joel Madden are doing and I'm really upset <laughs> oh, this, is, this is why good Charlotte broke up yeah <laughs> one of those and moments I'm like this is why they broke up <laughs> um you know a question that I had down here was you know just I mean they have a whole lot of uh artists collabing on this Krayshawn, Wiz Khalifa, Casey Veggies, you know, a question I had was why did they have MGK on this song in particular, but I, I'm going to follow it up with, you know, I want to get into talking about what we each think the song is kind of about, what they're trying to say, because, um, you know, when I really sat down and, like, looked at the lyrics, I was like, okay, the, this seems like this is MGK telling his story and also GC telling their story, so, like, this is the world's colliding, right? But yeah, let's start. Uh, I'd love to hear both of your thoughts on what this song is about. What's going on lyrically here? Um, honestly, like re-looking over the lyrics and stuff, it's a very, like, obviously years later kind of, I get a very anthem-esque vibe. Mm -hmm. Kind okay. of, you know? Um, a little more hardcore than Anthem. Um, but, um, I don't give a fuck and I'm going to do what I want to do kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why I like this song so much too. Because, mm -hmm. because I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what like I put on my like notes. I was like underdog anthem. Mm, yeah, and, I mean, <laughs> and, and 
Haven't TC even like said in interviews that like they've always been the underdogs? Like even at the height of their career, they were always the underdogs. Like, yeah. I feel like they've said things like that. Yeah. So like part of this for me too is like for OMG and GK, I think the main like message for me in the song is is just knowing your own worth and believing in and betting on yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. just like that willingness to put in the work do whatever it takes and I feel like that's so true because like you think back to the old days of Good Charlotte like going out and papering their own like because things were so different back then you had to go out print out flyers go and like do every showcase to try to find yeah. a label exact whereas now you can do that all online you can but, like, but there's there's like a difference I think in artists that will go out and play every showcase and artists that all they do is online but yeah I like you have to still create that like intimacy because like that's what mm-hmm, trapped me like mm-hmm. I said is like the passion that you can feel and like there's a genuine care and I see that in artists like Youngblood too and Kenny Hoopla like when they or even Jaden who like looks out into the crowd and you just see yeah. it and you're like they're in this disbelief because they just thought they like these kids who either you know maybe came from nothing or came from bullied backgrounds and just being told yeah. that they would never be good enough and just figuring out how to change that Mm -hmm. I love what both of you said here I you know it's funny it's like as I was like I listened to this over and over like as I did my notes and everything and so many GC songs came to mind from so it you know I think there's a little bit of a vibe of like kind of being immersed in this like sort of glam Hollywood nightlife which like to me I think of like girls and boys keep your hands off my girl um which Girls and Boys was written when the twins went clubbing in Los Angeles for the first time and like, you know, couldn't get to clubs. And um, by this point, I think they like DJed at every club in town. Um, But I can get that there's still probably a feeling of no one really understood them in that world. And, you know, Ashley Godfrey, you had mentioned the anthem. And and I just like, I want to note that like, you know, MGK is talking a lot about how he's worked so hard and he's had really humble beginnings and there's a line where he talks about you know the labels think he's a gamble and he's telling the labels to just play their cards which like number one I I think like Waldorf Worldwide is the GC song I think of Um, but also I think of like GC like you know hustling their butts off to like you know call record labels and mail CDs and like you know, saying you can sign us now for cheap or you can wait and they'll be expensive. Um, the famous lines, right? Yeah. Um, and just like, I, as I think about so much of that, I'm like, could be coincidental, but I am guessing that MGK was a diehard GC fan growing up and, you know, read like all the interviews that we have and like knows all these things too. Um so I I like I, I like those just all those lies in the verses. Yeah, the Waldorf oh, yeah. definitely stuck out to me with the whole like we'll be self-made millionaires. Thing. Yep. Yep. I want to go to parties where they got no guns. Yeah. Um, I want to take a second to talk about like genre of this song. Like MGK is rapping, the twins are singing. There's also this like Skrillex kind of industrial like drilling type sample sound that we've got going on so like is it hip-hop is it rap the lyrics are I guess they're like pop punk emo kind of depending on what you look at also kind of hip-hop but like I don't know like what where do we place this song does it have a place I mean I have thoughts but I'm really curious what you both (laughs) think I don't even know to be honest (laughs) Um, yeah I feel like it could fall into like kind of a rap rock kind of vibe like for me like the style of it I kind of related it to their other collaborations with like Blockstar Mm, okay um so kind of just like that there's emotion to it so like I get more of like the pop punk vibes or even just like the harder like rock vibes to where it could be like anti-flag like against the system and like how we're brought up and then right. you have like the actual rap style and technique from K. So it, I, I don't know. It's like it could be kind of few things. 
Yeah, it's not just like hip hop. Do you know what's coming to mind for me now, especially Ashley Rayburn, as you said, the words rap rock, like, I mean, people like a, a handful of emo rappers have talked about GC being an influence because like, duh, pop punk band that like grew up on hip hop. Um, I'm surprised that like, I feel like Linkin Park isn't brought into that conversation more because yeah. Linkin Park was doing rap rock, you know, well, even a great connection. I didn't think years about. before this. And yeah, very true. I mean, GC, there was in, I'm trying not to like go on too much of a tangent. I'm trying to like, you know, you know, uh, wrap this all up together and connect this all. But there's one, I think it's only one, in, one interview from the Gen RX album cycle. I think this is on When the Horn Blows. And that whole album cycle, you know, the main kind of artist they referenced as like an inspiration was Lil Peep. But uh, especially with his passing and everything, um, but in this interview, I think it was with When the Horn Blows, and I've, I've quoted this interview in, like, several episodes, they talked about Lincoln Park, and both with, like, stylistically as well as also, you know, with Chester um, passing. But honestly, like, I think what I'm getting from this is, like, A, I feel like we owe a lot more to Lincoln Park than, like, I think a lot of people are even conscious of because they were doing rap rock. Like, yes, GC was you know, hip hop influence, but they weren't doing rap rock. Linkin Park was and was big, I think even before GC was big. Um anyway what I'm wondering from this is we need to do a Linkin Park episode at some point in the future. Machine Gun Kelly was actually slated to be on the tour with Linkin Park oh. and Blank. Mm -hmm. Winchester. Oh yeah. My God. I had tickets that I remember it was August 7th that we were supposed to go <sighs> here. And it was just the, uh, that week before. Let's, um, I want to circle back to a little bit of the backstory on this song and kind of how it came to be. Um, <laughs> now we're talking. Uh, here's an interview that Benji did with a Hollywood reporter. When our band came out, we were the underdogs. Even when we were the biggest we've ever been, we were never critic starlings. <laughs> there we go. That's the interviews I was thinking of. How many cool hipster magazines have ever given props to us? So we're always going to have that outsider kind of vibe, especially when it comes to the music industry. With Machine Gun Kelly, that's totally his vibe too. That's why he was into our music when he was a kid. He identified with that. We reached out to him on Twitter, found him on YouTube before he got signed. I saw him at South by Southwest and immediately thought, this kid is dope. I liked his whole vibe and his attitude. Um, Kels did a piece with uh, MTV News, which now that I'm reading on it, I'm not sure if this bit is talking about OMG MGK or the MGK song that features Madden Brothers, but I, I think those must have happened around the same time. I'm not exactly sure which was like written or recorded first. Um, Kelly, which by the way, I feel like he's never really referred to as Kelly. Like that's not his last name. Like it's either Kells, that's kind of like the familiar or MGK. Kelly didn't have many details to give about the yet untitled LP, but recently tweeted about a recording session he had with the Madden Brothers of rock band Good Charlotte during his LA tour stop. Benji and Joel from Good Charlotte came over to the house and we vibed really well, Kels recalled. We went to the studio after the show and we just started listening to this electronic music. We sampled this guy named Skrillex and we made a great song. With some great rhymes, we're sure. Okay, so this is about this song because they mentioned the Skrillex example. Yeah. Um, there's also a Rolling Stone article um, around the release, around the time of the release of this. Uh, this clip from the Good Charlotte Brothers features Kelly, who inspired the Maddens with his over-the-top energy, says Benji. The day we met MGK, Joel and I both walked away saying, he reminds us of us at his age. MGK makes any track exciting, and in front of the camera, he commands everyone's attention. I feel like that's still pretty accurate. I agree. <laughs> I think it's, I mean, he has, I feel like, so much of a style. I mean, especially with his dress, there's just so much pink and everything. Um, it's very distinctive, very, like, cohesive. But regardless of that, you see a video, you see a performance, and, like, he, he's doing his thing. 
usually like climbing up the side of some kind of speaker that's like 500 feet tall and like yeah. hanging upside down too. Jumping off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm curious if either of you have any memories or stories that you want to share about, oh my God, OMG, I'm just kidding. I don't know about a story in particular other than just blasting it in my car, <laughs> constantly driving down the road to it. Yeah. You know, thinking I'm cool with with my with my bass in my car. <laughs> and this, wishing that I could hear it live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's> the, <truth. laughs> the memory I have attached to this song is part of the reason why I love it so much. Oh, well, please tell. <laughs> so after I finally got over myself and decided I could go to an MGK show alone <laughs> yeah. and not just let every show pass me by because I was like, I don't fit in there. Nobody's going to believe that I'm here for this show. Like, Meanwhile, MGK himself is like a big Good Charlotte fan. Yeah. But, but I'm just like, no, everybody's going to hate me and no, like think I'm a fraud. <laughs> But, like, I finally got over it, and I went to this place in Ann Arbor called The Blind Pig. Mind you, it looks like somebody's mom's basement, basically. Less, okay. than, two, less than 200 people. It was about negative seven outside that night. Wow. Wore a dress, so it was going great already. And it was actually Rook, the drummer for MDK. This was his first show ever with the band. They wow. pulled him out of mm -hmm. high school from Toledo and took him up to Ann Arbor to play. Um, and so, like, the show was incredible. And, like, I knew from that minute there, I was like, done. This is it. I'm in. Sign me up. I was like, I'm going to go, like, half and write out this tattoo and get it signed and get it tattooed the next day, which I did. Amazing. Um, but I was leaving. Like, he wasn't there. He was, um, he had a lot of Patron on stage to where, like, he <laughs> definitely threw up on stage. I was like, okay, so this is not happening. Um, so I went to leave. And there was these kids that came running from the dark alley and were like, do you have a Sharpie? And I was like, yeah, why? I was like, you can have the Sharpie, but I'm coming with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I followed, you know, just two strange, like, frat boys down an alleyway um, to a black Escalade that was in there. And they had him. He was just sitting in the back signing autographs for people um, and hanging out with some kids. And I went up and I was like, all right, like, this was my first show ever, but I am hooked. Like, and I held up my arm in the Sharpie and I was like, like, my arms were naked back then. I had no, I had like three tattoos, I think. <laughs> Um, on my arms everything else was on my legs so I could hide it from the parentals um, and I was like okay cool can you write it out right here and like again slightly intoxicated probably a little high good vibes and so he started writing it I out I think he's still usually like slightly intoxicated and a little high but 100% um, but then he like looks over at this arm where I have my your gone tattoo that was handwritten by Joel he's like oh that's pretty sweet writing what's that I was like oh yeah that's um Joel um from Good Charlotte he wrote that out and he stops me he's like he just like stops for a second dead like Joel Joel fucking Madden we did a song together they're my favorite people and I was like okay well now I love you even more and he started trying to sing it but he was oh. again <laughs> couldn't remember the lyrics and something in my body took over and I was like and like again I couldn't even barely go to the show alone because I was so anxious yeah um, but he started singing the lyrics strong and I was like okay this can't happen so I started singing it with him and we wrapped the entire song in the back seat of the car oh. while he was drunk and wrote out my lace up tattoo and then I went and got it tattooed the next day. That's incredible. That and I feel amazing. like, I feel like he probably, I, I have, I tell, I'm going to tell myself that he remembers that because like, just that probably made him as happy as it made you, you know? It's crazy. Like look back on that memory now and just think of like, okay, I'm just going to keep seeing these kids at some clubs and like. I'm about to go to a show in July at a 22,000 person arena. And it's so bad. I know. It is really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to take a second to talk about uh, what, I mean, we, we talked a lot about this, but I'm just curious if there's any others that come to mind. What GC songs that this track brings to mind? I mean, are there any others that you all have listed or that you can think of? I have a couple. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, so I know we so we did we talked about the anthem and like Waldorf World. I feel like Los Angeles Worldwide kind of oh, like yeah. play like the sequel into that too. 
Um, but then I also had I Heard You. Oh, yeah. With, like, you're not good enough for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Other people sure. just, like, tearing you down, making you not feel yeah. good enough in any which way possible. And, like, just thinking you're not worth, you know, worth playing your cards for. Wow. Yeah. Um. And then I also put down lifestyles for, like, the disillusionment that celebrities have. And, like, you know, with the beginning lyrics being, like, uh, foreign keys are the only way to their hearts. Um, and just not being in touch with reality because your famous and material possessions are mm -hmm. more important to you. So that's where, that's where my brain went with that. That is awesome. What a great, perfect. I would have to agree. Yeah, I, those are definitely good, good uh, song choices. No, I would think those are, I wouldn't have even thought of some of those because those are yeah. good choices. Like the anthem for sure. But no, yeah. And yeah. I think for sure those are good ones. Yeah. I want to talk about now, we can do these two kind of together, but other MGK songs that come to mind with when you hear this. And also just any MGK songs that we think good Charlotte fans would really get into. I have a very long list for this one as well. Let's, let's, well, let's start. I know, like, Give us some of the highlights, yeah. <laughs> this song in particular is reminds me a lot of his whole mixtape Rage Back. And it was made around the same time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But um, cause that's the one the Madden brothers are on too. So, right, I right. mean, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty similar. Sure. Um, but which makes sense. I mean, if it like. Right. Right. But I mean, I think good Charlotte fans should like a lot of his music personally. But well, I think Ashley Rayburn is about to give us like a list of every She's going to give us the lowdown. He's <laughs> ever written. Um, <laughs> the vibe of I like to have options. Yeah, I have I have two written here, but like y'all are so much more familiar, especially like because I knew you know tickets to my downfall. I know the new album made him sell, and a little bit of Ho Hotel Diablo. I know someone. I, I really don't know. I was listening to all of it over the weekend, but I don't really know it all that well. So well, I, I mean, wanna... I think it's funny. Like going going to the last show like Ashley and I went to the show in December we went to the Cleveland show in December okay and I thought it was funny how like the crowd is very young now at MGK shows really um, I was wondering about we, that we are we yeah we, we are the oldies now so really? okay. um uh <laughs> so so it's kind of funny that like now that he's in the more pop punk scene um that you would think like i guess more people our age would be i mean there's definitely the people who have liked you know who have been around as long as we have you know are there and stuff but you know i guess it's surprising to see so many young people there mm -hmm. you know and into the pop punk scene now so yeah. a lot of black axes on the back of hands yes <laughs> I just want to say Lots. thank God that I like didn't get any tattoos in college because if I did, I probably would have like gotten X's tattooed on my hands because I was straight edge and I just thought that I I am straight edge, but like I thought X's on the back of my hands were really cool and I like I never bought any straight edge merch, you know, like the the shirts that say like XXX, like you know, drug free, like clean for life, and, like. I still um, consider myself straight edge, but I uh, am really glad that I've kind of removed myself from the straight edge community because it's like, it's, I don't know, it's not my vibe. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's great kids are, you know, getting into it, but it's just yeah. it's kind of comical thinking about it sometimes. Yeah, but <laughs> yes, Ashley Rayford, I want to hear about what MGK song, songs that you think good Charlotte fans would like? Any MGK songs that come to mind with this track? So with this track, I've picked out like a couple that I think really kind of like at different stages to like kind of before 
the collaboration and a couple after that relate to the song. So before um, I picked up one of the main one was, which I think also a lot of the GC fans would like because it, it features Black Bear. Um, it's End of the Road. Okay. And like the initial like first verse entirely is just about him describing like how he never fit in. Um, mm. He was, you know, deemed as two squared, two cubed. So it just like never fit in. Um, and to where it's just important to s- stick on track of everything and like just do what you need to do to take care of yourself. Like one of the lines is everything they said I couldn't do, I did about twice. I love that. So I that, feel like that's, now it's really very TC vibes. Yeah. It's like, try to tell me I can't do it. I'm going to do it even harder. Um, and then I picked um, Street Dreams, which is on the Black Flag mixtape. Um, and that's kind of, I mean, it's one of my personal favorites, but that's more about like getting your story and kind of having to continually fight for it and to survive. Okay. Um, and then, uh, cause part of one of my favorite lyrics from that was these tattoos that I bleed with say everything about my story. So like, I feel like that kind of blends well with GC vibes too. The scars went deep inside this tattooed body. Yeah. Bingo. Yep. And then um, they uh, he has a song called Sail, which is sampled from the AWOL yes. Nation, so it has immediately, like, a rock vibe. Okay. Uh, uh, fun fact, too, Mod Sun directed that video at his old house, so the video is really cool, too. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, but his version of that song is about just the belief in getting out of any, like, kind of shit situation you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, just really going for it nonstop. Uh, my lyric that I found related to that one with this one was... Uh, I'm trying to be number one. Why would I settle? Yeah. So I feel like that ties directly into that. We'll be self-made millionaires. Yeah. And then the last, I'll leave it one more with like that relates to OMG and DK was Make It Happen, which is from his release in 2015, Journal Mission. Okay. And it's kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's um, like kind of seeing the people sleep on you, but regardless, you're going to make it happen. Like with this one, it is. Festival uh, song. Yeah. Yeah, it's a stress-free, I ain't trying to live in a state of mind, got me thinking different. The state of mind that I'm in got me thinking different. So it's like just having that mindset and carrying it with you through every stage of your life. Because as the pandemic has taught us, um, you never know really when it's going to come your way. Yeah. So just don't give up just because something doesn't work out one way, find another way. Yeah. No, I love that. I uh, I mean, my, not surprisingly, my selections are you know both actually from the new album specifically um mainstream sell out uh the first one is drug dealer which at first i didn't really get a gc5 but i read an article so it was like some review some commenter some article somewhere like i can't remember where that said it reminded them of good charlotte and i listened to it a couple more times and i was like all right i'm kind of getting some like good morning revival like almost like keep your hands off my girl kind of like uh vibes a little bit and then an obvious choice for me is emo girl which is like basically mgk's version of riot girl 100 percent. which a million fans have written that 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 song right you know the song about the girl that they're in love with that may or may not exist right Blink-182 had Josie. Like, his simple plan had my alien. Um, I, I want to talk on, just, I, I want to touch on just kind of MGK's sort of, like, place in sort of the modern pop punk scene. Um, this first article, and I feel like, you know, you hopefully both have a lot to just share. This first article was from Noise Trend. It was called, Why Rock Fans Should Care About Machine Gun Kelly's Venture into Pop Punk. I think this was like either right before, I think this, I want to say this was like right before tickets came out. Um, and it says, if MGK keeps a foot firmly planted in each area, an artist of his fame could single-handedly bring attention and waves to a scene starved of it for nearly a decade. It's already happening. In fact, as a legion of fans new- newly introduced to this style of music via Bloody Valentine are seeking similar sounds to round out their playlists. Lesser known artists like Neck Deep, State Champs, and others are sure to receive indirect attention from MGK's pop punk project simply because Spotify will align their singles into a playlist. While this may not turn State Champs into the next crossover smash that Good Charlotte was in 2005, 
MGK has the potential to foster legitimate growth for the pop punk community. Imagine if for his next tour, he chooses to bring out several Warped Tour bands for the opening slots. There are not many bands in the Warped Tour scene that would refuse this opportunity, though a few have already denounced MGK's pop punk pivot. But putting your music in front of an entirely different yet massive audience each night is only positive for the growth of a band's reach and popularity. Um, but yes, this this noise trend article. I mean, do either of you have any any thoughts you want to uh, start us off with? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think it's I think it's important for kids like me who grew up on this music, who like literally survived because of pop punk. Like, mm-hmm. if somebody is bringing attention to it and it's bringing everything kind of back up and running, like, look at all these pop punk bands that are coming out of retirement to tour now. That's a good point, Even- yeah. Even older bands, like we just had Jawbreaker do a uh, a huge anniversary tour for their album. So, like, even the 90s rock bands are becoming up and more relevant now because some of the kids that we grew up with through this music have kids now that are in a younger age and going to shows themselves. So, it's just, it's the next generation. And, like, were kids in the 90s turned away by the Rolling Stones and stuff like that? Like, no. So why there's like such a big fuss over some what somebody's wearing, what they look like, whether or not they were the first to do something is so trite and silly to me. Like if something is coming back and it's bringing back memories for you and bringing back this influence that literally like shaped and changed your life, like for me personally, I am here for it. Yeah. And that's what I want to see. I want to see this new wave grow. It's not about who did it first, what genre is better. Is there a genre? Is there labels? Like, I feel like in society as a whole, we should just be moving away from labels on everything that we're trying to do because it kind of just causes problems. Mm -hmm. Like, just allow these artists to have a platform to be. Like, I know I wake up in the morning. Some days I want to listen to alternative country some days i want to listen to freaking beethoven or like i want to just blast good charlotte and cry all day like it depends like we should be allowed to rotate and not be boxed in on what we're doing and so many of us draw inspiration from the bands and people we grew up to like i think about the music i listen to and like the friends i have now the connections i've made what i still like like half of my new music that i find out about is all through MDDN because I'm so attached to Good Charlotte and these other things. So, like, I learn about new music and fall in love all over again because these people carry on the influences Mm -hmm. that they grew up with, this common bond that we all share. And I just don't think that, like, it should be shit on as much as it is. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with her on that one. Like, this whole putting him into a single genre like you know oh eminem ended his career you know <laughs> that 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 or you know ran him out of breath well, like what time. is so eminem doing nowadays besides like <laughs> mgk well and i love eminem like but the whole thing is just like why is why is this even a thing why is it an argument yeah. stop it right. like i mean i like like ashley said i i listen to a ton of stuff like i i listen like like I like metal, I like pop punk, I like some country stuff, I like some rap stuff. I I play violin, so like mm-hmm. I love classical music. I mean, I listen to everything. So why does he have to, you know, lump himself into one thing? Yeah. Like, I mean, if he wants to tour with Avril Lavigne, let him tour with Avril Lavigne. And yeah. if he wants to bring, you know, Kenny Hoopla on another show, let him bring him on another show. Like why I don't get why why it's a an issue. Yeah. But you know I, th- I think you know if we're talking specifically about this piece, like the reaction I have strongly to this piece is like, you know, I love the optimism that the writer of this article has that like, oh my God, there it's gonna make make bands like you know state champs or neck deep blow up. At least in my perception, more than like that happening, more than like state champs, you know, getting like mainstream success, which like I I feel like there's been like a couple of handful of times over the past, like, you know, 10 years that I've been like, okay, state champs are like about to get mainstream success and they have they really haven't. Um I 
I feel like more than, you know, these sort of underdog or like semi underground bands that are like on labels that have fan bases that like started like, you know, DIY touring in a van and now they're, you know, doing pretty well for themselves. Um, I feel like more than like those bands blowing up, I feel like more than that, what I've kind of seen over the past few years has been like a lot of artists that were like already famous are kind of doing this or uh maybe they did a different like sort of style I mean like Avril obviously Avril did like the one album with Skater Boy but she was never really like a pop punk artist like I mean sort of um she made that I think accessible to a lot of like young women I think definitely but my son this is gonna sound like I'm I, I'm really curious to hear what you think about this, but like, okay, so like Modson is also on this MGK tour coming up this summer. Modson was on Warped and he has a pop punk album now. Um, but he's also engaged to Avril. So like is Modson on this tour because he's like has this cool new pop punk style album, or is Modson on this tour because he is engaged to Avril, who's also on this tour? Right. Right. For, for me, I think a lot of people also don't know the history of Mod Sun. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. He has a very similar story to Kay. Um, he, you, you know, he kind of did like the hippie hop genre. Yes. Where it was yeah, like that was, yeah. reggae, yeah. hip hop, and then like pop punk. Yeah, in there as well. But he, and was, he was on also, EST Fest for a long time, too. Oh, yeah. 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 They've been friends way longer than I think any of them either knew Avril. Um, but Madsen was also the drummer for Scary Kids, Scaring Kids. That's right. Time. That's right. I so always he, forget he, that. He's been in touring punk bands for a good chunk yeah. of his life. And he has, like, I feel like the artistry level of, like, having all these musicians together who can do multiple genres, who can do multiple styles, and have, like, a wide range of, like, also just, like, instrumental talent on top of that. Like, drummers, singers, guitarists, they can kind of do it all. So mm -hmm. for me, it's more about the artistry of the tour, but I can definitely see too that there is like, it's kind of like a big friendship tour, like who knows who. Yeah, but I feel fun. like post pandemic, it's become more of that and like touring pe with people mm -hmm. that you feel comfortable and safe with. Yeah. I, I think that's a good point. I think, I don't know. I, the more I think about it, I think Mod Sun is really a great, is, I think the, I don't know, I, I, the, Monson is the biggest and maybe the only real example that I can think of, of like someone that is like a, someone with like a DIY background, underground artist that has since gotten like main, pretty relatively mainstream success. Um, so I'm glad we've, I, I'm glad to hear just even more about kind of his background and his story and everything. Uh, I have to touch on also, <laughs> This recent Billboard magazine cover story, At Home with Machine Gun Kelly, the new Prince of Pop Punk, which made a lot of people very mad. Um, because like, you know, of like people I follow on Twitter, it's mostly people who like pop punk, but it's like half of them are MGK fans, like y'all, and half of them are like pop punk purists, which like, I'm sorry, but like if we're talking about pop punk, like maybe relax a little bit. But the subheader of this says, with a magnetic mix of glam, grime, and guitar, he went from also ran rapper to pop punk poster boy. With his new album, Mainstream Sellout, he's ready to prove he's no poser. And kind of a theme in this story is how hard he's like worked for his success in pop punk and trying to prove himself in that genre. I know it kills certain bands in that community that I got the success that I got, but I earned that shit, he says as he schools me in a chess game. Dude, I was fucking loading up the van with our drums and amps in 2010, traveling to Indiana and Chicago, playing Warp Tour. Uh, and he also talks about uh, people who, you know, see him play live and had never seen a, seen a show where someone plays guitar before. And I think that's really cool. And I mean, we'll see where he goes from here. Like, he's said, oh, now I'm going to go back to rap. But he also said he was going to go rap back to rap after tickets. So. 
I mean, I definitely would love to see another rap album, but yeah. I'm all about what he's doing now too. I mean, whatever, yeah. he, whatever he wants to do. Yeah. You know, I want to touch on a little bit, <laughs> so much material. I want to touch on a little bit, just, you know, there's this kind of split of, you know, essentially people our age that from like late twenties to like early to mid thirties that grew up listening to like GC and similar bands honestly like in my experience very very split on mgk right some of them are but, mgk oh, yeah. fans some of them are not and there was this uh tiktok that he made where he just talks about how like oh i'm emo 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 i heard the emo, emo guardians are pissed off and all the comments are just talking about how he's a poser and how this is literally what bullies into us in middle school and Imagine being a 30 year old man worrying about how emo you are. So it just, I, I'm posing this more as like a, just like a, a rhetorical question and something that I even think needs, I don't even know if this needs to be answered, but like, you know, he gets a lot of backlash and, you know, is he like not aware of it or is he like beyond caring? I feel like with that much success, it, like at that point, like, why care? It's like uh, just a rule of life. Like the only thing I can control in life is my own reaction and my own energy. Mm -hmm. So why am I going to put value on somebody else's that it doesn't, it doesn't affect me? Like it would make me sad possibly. Yeah. But I feel like every good Charlotte fan ever has dealt with this already <laughs> in middle <laughs> school. If you weren't bullied and, you know, made fun of for every time you wore a good Charlotte shirt because they were the sellouts of the time because they were successful. Because, you know, back then they were the pop punk kings who were successful selling our shows, them and Simple Plan. Like, we were just, you know, we dealt with this the whole time growing up. And now it's really cool to like them. And, like, people are like, oh, yeah, I like them. Like, really, Brad? Because you called me out in middle school. Right. And right. told me that I was a sellout and terrible and they were nothing but posers. Exactly what Machine Gun Kelly is going through right now. Yeah. Like, if you do something different, if you change even slightly. Like, someone will always be there to call you on your ship. But you know what? who else is going to be there? The loyal fans who have been supporting you from day one who don't yeah. care and, like, enjoy to see sounds change and to see artists grow, bloom, just develop over time. I don't want the same album 36 times in a row. I want something right. different. Yeah, that's a good point. And even if I don't like it, it doesn't make it bad. Yeah, and it's just like Good Charlotte. Have I liked every single little thing they put out? No, I haven't. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, do have I so loved the most host of, of the Good yes. Charlotte podcast? Yeah. I mean, have I loved most of it? Yes, but I haven't loved everything that Kells has put out either. So, right. I mean, you know, I mean, you're not going to love every single little thing every time. I mean, so. It should you know, just never discredit it, that artist for trying no, for doing something. No, but that something. doesn't mean that, yeah, yeah. I mean, you still have to give them credit for what they're doing and what they're trying. You know, I mean, you can't give them shit every time they want to try something different. You're just like, oh, didn't love it. So you yeah. move on. I mean, exactly. I don't know, but, you know, they, but I think he, for the most part, handles it pretty well. I mean, but. I, I mean, I, it's like going to shows. I mean, he's been covering Blink-182 since 2011, since I've been seeing stuff. So to I mean, me, he has I mean, a Paramore cover on tickets. Like, yeah. So I, th I think he's liked pop punk stuff for a yeah. long time. So I, I think, I think he very clear. And like anyone who like knows much about him, like it's very easy to find that. I think, and I, I could spend like a whole other episode talking about this, but like, I think there's something to be said of like, okay, there's like all these bands like MGK and all these, so many artists doing pop punk right now that are like pretty much all produced by Travis Barker. So there's like yes. a lot more kind of sameness in this like new wave than I think there was, you know, 20 years ago just objectively because right. it's like pretty much all produced by the same person yeah. but i i don't think that means there won't be room for more um i you know i think we'll just have to see what kind of happens in a couple of years 
Um, I want to touch on, so there was not much, there weren't really like reviews of this album, a couple of shout outs and some articles, uh, which we'll get to in a sec. I want to briefly touch on the music video. I mean, there's not really much happening. It's like the twins and Kells are just kind of like wrapping up the lyrics. There's some filters. There's like an explosion, some like space type footage. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of just a vibe. There's not, I don't really think there's anything like happening. It's there. Like friends hanging out on a Saturday night. Yeah. 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 I feel like, like they difference. probably just put. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the first thing I see when I see the video. And it's so cute. And it's endearing. It's so true, it. though. It's so true. <laughs> it's so true. And Kel's, you know, doesn't I'm have so a beard. Sorry, boys. <laughs> it's cute. I'm it's like, very I'm like watching it right now because I'm like trying to like. Reminisce. I'm 5'11", and I barely hit this man's shoulder, so I get it. Wait, how tall is MGK? Six foot four. Yeah, he's, like, he's wow. over six. Yeah, he's, he's six tall. Six three and, like, you six know, four, so yeah. right there. I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm 5'4", so, you know, the, the Benji Madden's a little bit taller than me. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just a vibe. Like, I, for all I know, they put an iPhone on a self-timer. <laughs> like, uh, so this song, like I said, not really any reviews, but there was an alt-press article that ran around the Tickets to My Downfall release, and it was 17 MGK songs that rock just as hard as Tickets to My Downfall. Um, of course, it mentions OMG MGK. All the way back in 2011, before even releasing a full length, MGK joined Twins for a track on their brand new side project, The Madden Brothers. Uh, Kells back to the Maddens on Oh My God, OMG MGK. As if throwing down with the good Charlotte, Charlotte icons wasn't cool enough, the track also mixes in from first to last Sonny Moore through a sample of his Skrillex cuts, Gary Monsters and Nice Sprites. There was some other article I thought I had linked it in here, but there was some other article I found that was like, you know, some MGK collabs we'd love to see on the next album or something, and it mentioned Good Charlotte. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting for it. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a fan upload of this music video, because, again, it was, like, scrubbed from the internet. Um, I'm going to leave my comments on that um, out. Uh, so there's a fan <laughs> upload by... <laughs> Ash Madden. Um, California Dreamer said, love this shit. This song introduced me to MGK, now a fan. LTFU, which is Lace the Fuck Up. Um, Marcy Clark, you know, a couple artists were, or a couple fans were saying that, you know, they were fans of both the GC and MGK, so they really liked this. Um, KFC Apocalypse said... <laughs> I love how MGK doesn't try to just be famous. He brings everyone with him when he tries to be that deserves respect. Um, that was definitely written several years ago. Um, still true, I think, but definitely written several years ago. Uh, Applejack said, OMG, I was laughing so hard when I first saw this that I started crying. I love you, Benji. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, but I just, I can't. Stop thinking about what y'all are upset about, you know, um, the height <laughs> difference. Um, <laughs> like, I'm trying not to laugh because I feel like that's not nice. Because, like, you can't help your height, you know? Like, I know. Like, I, I feel dwarfed next to him. I'm 5'4", yeah. and I have definitely have met yeah. him quite a few times and I'm like a little tiny person next to him. It, so. It's just the artistic style of the video that makes it like stand out a little bit more but like everybody looks tiny next to him. Well they're all just kind of standing next they're just the twins are just standing next yeah. to him right? It's like, you know? a, it's like a lineup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like black and white kind of fuzzy footage um, on a white backdrop literally could have been shot on an iPhone in you know, a spare room in the studio or something. Yeah, it's cute though, because it's like they all kind of just like look like three brothers just kind of like messing around, just like Kels, out, Kels is like, like, so I have a younger brother. He's only a year and a half younger. I'm 5'4", and I mean, my brother long, long ago hit like 6'2". Um, 
And it's kind of, I'm kind of getting, I was <laughs> getting that a little bit as you say brothers, like, like when your younger brother, that moment when your younger brother is suddenly much taller than you. My brother just turned 21, but he's been taller than me for several years now. He's oh my six gosh. foot two. Oh my his gosh. 16 year old nephew is six foot three. Gosh. Oh my God. My brother's only like five, seven. Yeah. <laughs> he's like two years younger than me. <laughs> he's <laughs> small. Yeah. I, this has been so wonderful, Ashley and Ashley. This so I, I am just I'm so happy we did this. I, I just want to wrap up by asking how has oh my god OMG MGK held up for you over time? Uh, fantastically, still a banger. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like literally for me, it takes me right back to that moment being in that weird little alley in his car. So like it's extra special because now, like I said, seeing him now, I've seen him 70 times now. And like, I know that that's like small... almost as many times as you've seen Good Charlotte. I well, they were on a break. <laughs> Yeah, right. You were like, I had to fill the something. hole in my heart somehow. Uh, MGK literally set a record with Tech Nine for doing the most tour dates. So it was like 99 tour dates in like 110 days or something like that. And like, I was just, it was here, it was cheap, and there was a lot of Midwest shows. So it stacked up pretty fast. Um, but like, just like not having those like super intimate moments anymore and like seeing like, it's one of the first artists where I'm kind of getting to see every step of the process. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like going sure. back to like Same. this song and like the excitement of like, okay, like these are my new new two favorites. Like I'm going to fall so in love with this guy. And like, clearly it lasted because it's like 12 years later. And you have like an MGK sleeve and. Yeah. Bit. I'm actually going to get OMGK, MGK lyrics to connect the good Charlotte sleeve. Oh my God. Stop. I love MGK that. That's perfect. It's perfect. That's amazing. So, like, for me, this song takes me back to the start of that journey and, like, really just that first foot in the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't stopped yet. I love it. Yeah. I mean, this is just, it's just a, it's an oldie and a goodie, you know? I mean, it's, you know, I've been here a long time, too. I mean, I've been to my fair share of shows as well, Good Charlotte and for, MGK so it's it's just a, a reminder of you know all the old times good times and like 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 how Ashley said like I've been there like seeing an artist from the from the beginning to to now to seeing sold out arenas and yeah. now stadiums this summer it's crazy and it's just it's 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 crazy it's just insane. So cool. Yeah, that's got to feel cool just seeing him. Of course, you miss the intimate moments, but just getting to well, really yeah. see an artist grow was a um, pretty good feeling. A, a question that I like to ask as I wrap up an episode is, what has Good Charlotte meant to you over the years and how has that changed? Um, but I also want to ask in the same breath, what has Machine Gun Kelly meant to you over the years and how has that changed? Um, well, same, <laughs> same thing. Good Charlotte has obviously been my favorite band for a very, very long time. And I mean, not only has their music meant a lot to me, but I mean, they've brought a ton of amazing people into my life over the years. And, um, and same thing with, I mean, with, with Kells too, like, you know, over the years with shows, I mean, um, you know, I've met so many people and I mean, going to all the shows and just seeing people and bonding and I mean, just all the experiences I've had and I mean, and they, they both have just so many songs that just mean so much lyrically. And I mean, I just feel like I love them so much more just as time goes on just like their meanings just get so much more as, as mm -hmm. time goes on incredible yeah thank you for sharing very similar for me like i think the connection between good charlotte and mgk is just it's it is special because 
everybody I feel like in the fandom kind of took that hard hit when they called the hiatus Mm -hmm. and then to find something in that time period where I did still feel at home because again like when I entered the MGK world I was by myself like I did where I the people I was friends with were not into him did not like it it was not for them at all so like to have that bridge to where like I still went and sat out lot outside in line for you know 12 hours before the show started because I just wanted to be up front and close and feel that energy and like to me a good like group of people like I think about like Rachel and Char and and Ashley and like meeting these people like early on and even though we're from like different worlds because like you know, I'm the tattooed punk rock kid. Like there were some people like that, but a lot of it was a rep fan base. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I've seen a lot of those people who were solely in it for the rap fan base kind of drop off over the years and like be the ones who kind of start talking shit. But the other kids who were just there and like who were at like the first EST fest and you see it on their face, the same thing you we would see at like a good Charlotte show, like people crying in the audience, connecting, making best friends for life. And it wasn't something I had experienced with other bands, like grew up being fans of so many different bands, like all the pop punk bands, but Good Charlotte was a world where I fit in and I felt like I was home and nothing else mattered. And I started to find that again with MGK and it's been over 12 years now and it's still just like things change and it, it gets a little bit more hectic. And it's crazy to see the level of it now. So it, it doesn't feel as like personal anymore, but it's also kind of beautiful in the same way to see mm-hmm. that come back. It's kind of like the moment when people started appreciating and loving Good Charlotte again and realizing how much of an influence they had in this industry and like giving them the award for Young and Hopeless and the, at the APMAs and stuff like that. You just get to see the turnaround too. Mm-hmm. And experience all that. And it's it's something so special. And I never thought I would have it with one band with Good Charlotte, let alone. And then have that experience again with somebody who was brought to us by Good Charlotte. Because, like, I don't know if I would have fallen as hard in love as I did with MGK if it wasn't for that, the GC connection. It makes it more special. Well, yeah, especially with the timing. I, I get that. I get why you say that. I... Ashley and Ashley, this has been so, so delightful. Uh, do either of you have any last words about, oh my God, OMG, MGK, about Good Charlotte, about Machine Gun Kelly, or about yourself? Just that this has been great. And, you know, I just think just that the connection between the two is obviously, like Ashley said, it's, it's, it's just crazy how there's that connection and I'm glad that obviously I've met you guys between you know through through GC and it's crazy that Ashley pretty much likes the same stuff that I like (laughs) and uh yeah it's just it's 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 fantastic I love all of it it is and like I think if I've learned anything these past couple years that we've been in this very uncertain state of life it actually is super relevant to this song too with omg mgk it's just you know don't don't be afraid to just go for it like you have to bet on yourself and believe in yourself now more than ever if something in this life is making you unhappy or like somebody is telling you that you're not good enough that you're not gonna do it like fuck that (laughs) fuck that so hard like there's no other way to say it but like what we've learned is like you cannot get your time back Mm -hmm. so don't waste that energy on things that are not important or meaningful to you because you at the end of the day you have to bet on yourself and then go from there because nobody else is gonna incredible this has been so so lovely as we wrap up, I would love to ask you both for Sam for a song recommendation. Uh, I have the Generation GC and Friends Spotify playlist. Um, obviously, this song is not on Spotify, but we'll put in some of the MGK tracks. Uh, I feel like there's some MGK on there already because 
feel like other people have uh, suggested it. It was probably us. Probably you guys. <laughs> but I, I definitely had other Maybe. people that have liked, especially the the you know tickets and everything. Um, but besides Good Charlotte and MGK, just anything you've been listening to lately? Well. I am super into the band Spirit Box right now. Okay. I keep hearing so, about them, but I've never listened, but I feel like I'm super into it. them because they're a, they're a female fronted band. And um, not only can she sing like an angel, but she, her, you know, screams are insane. Incredible. Um, so, I mean, anything off their record, Eternal Blue is great, but um the opening song is called uh, Sun Killer. So okay. I would say Sun Killer is a great song. Perfect. Ashley Rayburn, anything? Uh, me being me, I have two. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously one of our, again, like, and these are both artists I found through Good Charlotte, which is appropriate. Um, one band I just cannot get over right now that both also Alyssa loves to. Shout out Alyssa. Hi, um, Alyssa. Boston Manor. Alyssa. Oh my God, Alyssa loves Boston Manor. We have Boston Manor tattoos. I love them. Amazing. Um, it's it's, Did you guys like just see them together? Yeah, on May 7th. It was yeah, perfect. I was like, oh yeah, so like literally like a little over a week ago. Yeah. Took a lead singer right to the face. <laughs> as, as you do. As you do. Yeah. As you do. Um, but they released a new song a couple weeks ago called Fox Glove. Okay. Oh, I haven't Abs heard it yet. Oh, it's so good. Okay. It, hit, it hits real hard in the feelings. Okay. Um, and then the second one, I also can't take off repeat, is Dwayne. And uh, it features poor Stacy. It's called Die Out Here. Okay. It's got that, like, new punk, pop punk vibe. It's very cool. Um, kind of gives me, like, the Kenny Hoopla, MGK vibes. And it's just, it's beautifully produced. And it sounds incredible. And Dwayne is just an angel. So... Amazing. This has been so wonderful. As we wrap up, would uh, you both like to share your social media just so anyone listening can stay in touch? Sure. Um, well, Facebook, I'm Ashley Godfrey. Um, Twitter, I'm at Ashley underscore EST89. MGK at reference, obviously. Love it. Um, <laughs> and um i believe on instagram i'm uh i think i'm either crazy schley or crazy schley 89 i can't remember which it's one, one of those yeah crazy it's one of those yeah yeah <laughs> you'll find me yeah i know i follow you so yeah there's no 89 yeah. on that one i just looked oh, <laughs> oh thanks thanks, thanks for, for clarifying <laughs> <laughs> oh i forgot mine now too I know uh, I was trying to look your, I think your Twitter is I am Ashley Nicole and then yes. your that one will never change I'll yeah. fight somebody for that one uh, uh, Instagram is A&R 317 and then Facebook go. is just Ashley Raven. amazing Ashley. Ashley in one episode and Ashley thank you so much for a wonderful Ashley Squared MGK Men Brothers episode this has been delightful listeners thank you for tuning in this has been so much fun. Last time we talked about right where I belong from cardiology. On our next episode, after a break, we'll be talking about a song from Youth Authority. Thank you all for tuning in. My name is Molly Huddleston. I've been your host as well as the producer, creator, and editor of this show. You can follow Generation GC at Generation GC Pod POD on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also follow me, Molly, at M Huddleston, M H U D E L S O N on Twitter and Instagram. Please make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you listen. If you are on Apple Podcasts, please rate, leave a review, but most importantly, tell your friends. Thanks for tuning in.